Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's uh, Richie from Boston. I've had a lot of my subscribers ask me to do some new videos on, uh, well, besides all the wacky stuff that's going on, they were asking about self-defense and uh, survival kits and bug-out bags. This isn't my bug-out bag, but this is my... This bag is the bag that goes with me every day. This is my pocketbook, my man purse, basically. This is a Ma Maxpedition Sitka. This is a small bag. This bag is basically, <clears throat> basically the size of a, a small backpack or a coach bag that a woman would carry. It weighs about 18 pounds. And the bag consists of a pouch on the side, a main compartment. I've got a, a real military compass on the front. This has a uh, RJM tactical tomahawk on the side, which depending on where you live is a little bit of a... Uh, Depends where you live. I keep it fairly low key so nobody notices it. You don't flash it around. But a tomahawk is a great tool for processing wood and it's also a really good self-defense item. So that stays right on the side of my bag. On the very top of the Maxpedition Sitka, I've got a pair of really good leather gloves I've got at uh, either Eastern Mountain Sports or REI. First, I keep them right on the top so I can get to them quick. The other thing I keep on the top is this is a uh, Rivers West fleece blanket. This blanket has grommets in it. This blanket is waterproof. It's warm, it's soft, and it's waterproof. So this is also doing double duty as a tarp. And it's also puncture resistant. Rivers West. It's a great, great, uh, it's a great blanket. And it's made in the United States. So you can't beat that with a stick. If we go in the front pocket right here, I'm trying to keep this all in, uh, all in, uh, all in frame. I suck at making videos, but I can't keep my mouth shut, so I gotta make them. And apparently, people like them. So here we go. A couple of morale patches. If you've ever been in the military like I was, morale patches are huge. Right off the bat, in the very top compartment, I've got a flashlight. Flashlight that runs on two double A's. I've got a, uh, a survival towel, towel. This thing, when you get this wet, this thing blows up to the size of a beach towel. They work. I've used them in real life. I've used those in the Smokies and the Rocky Mountains. They work. I also have a little Esbit stove. You never know. With a couple of fuel tablets in there. If you can't get a fire started because it's too wet or whatever, or you just don't have the skill set, that'll light. As long as you have a match. Got a little 550 cord in here, bright orange. I have a smaller flashlight. I also have the battery in this backwards so it doesn't accidentally turn on in my pack. And I have some small Coleman hand towels. Coleman is decent stuff, but do not bet your life on it. Sorry to say, Coleman, but it's true. All right, this bottom pouch right here in the front Got a zip, zippered compartment, and all I have in there is a little bit of duct tape. It's probably about 20 feet right there. And right in the rain notebook. No bug out kit would be complete without a right in the rain notebook. And I've got a uh, permanent marker, and I have some more duct tape because two is one and one is none. Keep a nice lightweight carabiner on the side. You never know when you're going to need a carabiner. You open this up, I'm a city boy, so I stay in the woods, I stay in the mountains, I do lots of survival stuff, and I love hiking, but I carry bug spray because bugs love me. Apparently, I'm delicious. I don't know. Chem lights, chem lights, chem lights. You can never have enough. They don't weigh anything. Redundancy. I have another flashlight. This is a phenomenal flashlight because it's a free play driven. It has a dynamo in it. Not only does this thing run without having without the need for batteries, this will also charge other items. So this does double duty. 
Everything you can, everything you pack, if it can do more than one job, it's worth its weight in gold. This has a little bit of weight to it, but again, if the batteries fail, I can always use that. This is a UCO uh, camping candle. This little guy pops right out. It's got a nine hour candle inside. I've used these in real life. I've used them in the rain, they work. It gives enough light so that you can see your surroundings a little bit and it actually will give off some heat if you're inside a tent or a tarp shelter. So those are good to have and I definitely carry one. A radio, again, this is an all band radio. Just if the shit hits the fan, you want to be able to know what's going on. At least, at least hear other people, I guess. This has weather channels. It also has a flashlight, and it works on a uh, dynamo and solar. I don't give the solar too much weight because it really doesn't do shit. But the hand crank will keep it going. Plus, it's kind of a morale item. Not only does it have a flashlight in a radio, you get to you know. If you just ran off into the woods or ran off someplace and you're secluded, you want to hear what's going on. But don't believe everything you hear, just like any other time. I've got some titanium tent spikes. These, paracord, the river's west on its own. I can make a lean-to shelter. Now also in another pouch on the side right here, I have another smaller Maxpedition pouch. And I have a military-grade uh, poncho in there so that'll keep me dry it also has grommets on it just like this so I can use it to make a shelter as well all right that's the first couple of one top top military compass it's always good to know which direction you're going learn how to use a compass there's enough videos on YouTube to figure it out no problem take a look inside here I've got a portable shovel Worth its weight in gold, again. I've got another pair of tactical gloves. This is for if it gets real heavy. I've got a standard issue wool watchman's cap. This is a chem light type deal, but it's made by laserbright.com. They use these in the military. This thing will last 100 hours on a, on a, uh, on a set of batteries. And it uses the small watch type battery, so it lasts forever. That's a good score. They're very expensive, but that's a good score. I do not subscribe to the school of thought where budget bug out. If this stuff is for a bug out, and this is the last shit you're ever going to have, you want stuff that's going to last. Made in America. Made in America. Made in America. Made in America. As much as I can. You know what I mean? Adventure me medical kits, bivy. This is the Thermal Light 2. This is the one that actually doesn't turn you into a... Uh, it's not like laying in a bag full of water. Your sweat doesn't cause condensation. This one actually breathes. Thermal Light 2. That's the one you do want. <clears throat> what else do I have in here? I have a pair of uh, Ex Officio underwear. These are the ones that you can wear for six, six months in a whack and never have to wash them. I guess. I don't know. Wool socks. Wool. You have no idea. Do not use cotton. Wool only. I've got an empty waterproof bag. I have three field stripped MREs, meals ready to eat in here with the heaters. So that's technically enough food for three days, but that could I could stretch that out into three weeks if I had to. Nobody wants to, but if you have to, you have to. So with my flashlights, I also carry this. This is a Goal Zero solar panel. It's a small solar panel, but this is also my small everyday bag. So if my batteries fail, I have another battery pack inside here. I have connectors for two different types of the mini USB and the micro USB. If my batteries fail, I have a way of sustaining. This is sustainable. I can recharge my batteries. Nobody ever thinks of that. I don't carry extra batteries like Duracells or whatever, because what if they fail? I have a really good SOL emergency blanket. These are very good to have. A blob of uh, tin foil, good to have. And I have some uh, snares here by Thompson for catching squirrels, all that stuff. Not only do I know how to catch a squirrel, I know how to skin a squirrel, and you should too. 
It's disgusting, it's gross, but if it's your ass and you really do want to survive, you'll eat a squirrel. You'll eat a dog. Who cares? Dogs are probably delicious. I don't know. I've got some leaders for a fishing line. These can also be used for traps. Again. What else we got in here? All right, first aid. This is a uh, Adventure Medical Kits trauma pack. You have to carry one of these or you're going to be bumming. I also carry an Israeli bandage to go along with this. And I also carry bleed arrest, which is quick clot, quick clot, and a SWAT tourniquet. So that's a heavy trauma kit right there. Bandages, a small boo-boo kit. What else do we got in here? You know I got fire, right? And here it comes. Magnesium block. If you can't find anything else, use this right here. Magnesium burns like a champ. Refer to the Twin Towers if you don't believe me. That's what thermite's made of right there. The small fire kit. Tinder starts. I've got some... Uh, <clears throat> emergency matches. If you get emergency survival matches, do not buy Coleman's because they will not work. When you need them, they will not work. These are uh, underwater matches, so they also they're like they're like lighting a sparkler. These things stay lit even underwater. No joke. I have some uh, high tensile 500 pound line to go along with my paracord. I also have a Best Glide Military Scout Pocket Survival Kit. This is what got me started back in the day. This little kit. If you forgot everything else, there's a little bit of everything in here. Maybe I'll do a uh, video on this as well. This is a great little kit. They sell these on Amazon for 30 bucks, 36 bucks. It's worth its weight in gold, and if you have it in your pocket, you're better off than if you don't. You hear me? This is an adapter so I can put AAA batteries into the solar panel. What else do I got here? Come on. And redundancy. I've got a whistle. This is made by Topps Knives. <whistles> nice. My backpack also has a whistle built into one of the buckles. I have a military can opener, which really do work. And I have another rod with uh, ferrocium magnesium on it for starting fires. Now, this bag is my everyday bag. I don't use it. This isn't my bug out bag. This bag goes with my truck. This bag goes with me. Where I go, it goes. I carry a knee brace, just in case. And I also carry an ankle brace, just in case. And I carry a Leatherman Super Tool. This thing is a beast. Saw, knife, everything else. It's a little bit heavier than my Leatherman Wave. It's a little bit heavier than my SOG. But if the shit hits the fan, I want this because it's as close to a full-size tool as I can get my hands on. The other nice thing about the Sitka is it has a rear compartment back here. So it's good for people with concealed carries. More 550 cord. So I've got 550 cord with the, uh, I forget the name of them, the hooks that are already built onto it to help you uh, secure yourself easier. <clears throat> and that is pretty much it for this bag. So let me see what we're doing for time because YouTube... YouTube screwed me on time because I put a video out that told too much truth, so they gave me a copyright strike. But that is basically it, folks. This, there is no clothing in this bag because this is my small everyday bag, but I am very conscious of what I wear when I leave the house. I wear wool socks. I wear good quality clothing. I always have a knife on me as an EDC, all the time, at least one. I have a bison last chance 500 pound belt that I wear every day and I dress accordingly. So this complements whatever I'm wearing or this complements my bug out bag on its own. Anyways, Richie from Boston, keep an eye out. I'm going to be making more videos and I will cover my full size bug out bag in the next one. Watch your six out there, people.